Welcome class. Uh, Happy New Year to all of you. Hope you had a good break from school. Um, I know it's a difficult circumstances that we have at the moment with lockdown and working from home, but hopefully, you know, with these online videos, we can ensure that you um, uh, get, don't, don't miss out on any school and carry on with your learning as much as we can. Um, it's a bit of an experiment, so just kind of bear with me for now and we'll see how we get on. So let's start with some starter questions. Um, this is some material that we did at the end of last term. So we're looking at the mean, mode, median and range of two different sets of numbers. I'd like you to pause your videos and try and find out the mean, mode, median and range of these two sets of numbers. Right, let's find the mean first of all for question A. We're going to do that by adding all the numbers together. So it's 5 plus 12 plus 7 plus 12 plus 11 divided by the number of numbers that we have there, which is 5. This gives us the same as 47 divided by 5, which is 9.4. Next, we're going to look at the mean of question B. So we're going to add up 12 and 1 and 1 and 4, and then divide that by the number of numbers, which is 4 in this case. This is the same as 18 divided by 4, which gives us an answer of 4.5. Next, we're going to find the mode. Remember, with the mode, that's the same as the most often, the number that appears the most often. We know that by the first two letters of mode, which is MO. So the numbers that appear most often in the first set is going to be the, are going to be the numbers 12, because they appear twice. So we're going to write down the mode is 12. For the second set, we look at these two numbers. The numbers that appear most are going to be the two sets of ones. So we're going to write that down as our mode. Next, we're going to look at calculating the median of a set of numbers. So we're going to take all the numbers and we're going to put them in order of size. So from the smallest to the largest, so the first one is number five, then it's the number seven, then the number 11, the number 12, and finally the number 12. So the middle number in this case is number 11, so we know the median is going to be 11. For the second set, we're going to be, again, doing the same thing, looking at the numbers uh, 1, 1, 4, and 12. But we see with this time that we have two numbers in the middle, 1 and 4. So when we're trying to find the median and we've got an even set of numbers, we add the two middle numbers together and then we divide them by two. Um, we're effectively finding the mean of the two middle numbers. So one plus four gives us five, divided by two gives us two and a half. Now finally, we're going to try and find the range of these set of numbers. So we're looking at the numbers up above and we're trying to find the smallest and the largest numbers. In this case, the largest number is going to be the 12 and the smallest number is going to be the five. So we're going to write down the range is equal to 12 minus 5, which gives us a range of 7 for this set of data. Again, looking at the other set of data for part B, we've got the numbers 12 and numbers 1 as the largest and the smallest numbers. So the range is 12 minus 1, which gives us 11. Now, I'm going to ask you to write down the learning intentions for today, which is to learn the features of a stem and leaf plot or diagram and to learn how to interpret a stem and leaf plot or diagram. So can you please jot these down into your jotters um, so that we've got a record for today's lesson? This is going to be uh, a two-part uh, lesson, really. So the first part today, we're going to look at the interpretation of the stem and leaf plots, and then we're going to be looking at how we actually create stem and leaf plots in a subsequent lesson. So this is what a stem and leaf plot looks like. I'm just going to highlight some of the features on a stem and leaf plot and talk through them in turn. So on the left hand side we have what we call the stem of the stem and leaf plot. So this part here are called the leaves of the stem and leaf plot. We have a title which tells us what the chart is about and finally we have something called the key which tells us actually how to interpret the stem and leaf plot. Now let's see how we're going to use this key to um, interpret what information is on the chart. 
So we see, for instance, on the left-hand side that the title tells us that this chart tells us some ages and years. And the key tells us that we've got this number two on the left-hand side. We've got a line in the middle, and then we've got this one on the right-hand side. And we interpret this as the number 21, or 21 years old in this case. So yeah, let's use this information to interpret the first or the top row of data. Now we've got this number one on the left-hand side, and we've got this other one to the right-hand side of that line. Now we would write that number as 11, because the number one is on the left-hand side represents the tens unit, number on the right-hand side represents the ones unit, so that's 11. The number two here that's in the middle, now we would say the same again, the left-hand side number on the line represents the one or the tens units, and the two represents the two of the units, so it's a 12. And again, we've got another number two here, so we take the number on the left as the tens units, and the number two as the two in the units column. So we've got 12 again. So that first line reads 11, 12, and 12. For the second line, maybe here, you can pause if you would like to see if you can write out these numbers and then check the answers that I'm going to give you. In this case, the left-hand side number is now two. Um, so that's the tens unit. And then we've got number one in the units column. So that gives us number 21. Then we have number 24. We've got the six in the units column and two in the tens again. So that gives us 26. And finally, 28. So that's all of our second column. And again, I'm going to ask you to pause the video to try the last two rows. For our final two rows, we've got the numbers 35 and 37, and the number 45. So now let's turn to some actual questions. So the first thing that we're going to try and do here is identify what are all those numbers on the top row uh, representing. So we've got the age in years here. So I'm going to write out the first set of numbers as 21, 22, 24, and 27. Again, pause your videos to answer question A, which is the ages of those people in the second level. The answers are 31, 37 and 39. Please again pause your videos to answer these next three questions. We can see there are six different numbers in that row with the number four at the front. So that represents six different people that have ages in their 40s. When we're looking at how old the oldest person is, we look to the bottom row where we've got the oldest people and to the right hand side. So the oldest person is going to be 68 in this case. And finally, for the youngest person, we're going to look at the top side of the chart and the leftmost number, and we're going to have the youngest person is going to be 21 years old. I'm going to say well done for sitting through all of that. Um, if there's anything that you didn't understand, please make sure that you go back through the video and then rewatch sections um, that you're confused by. I'm going to ask you now to look at the worksheet that's been attached to the Google Classroom and the um, Show My Homework web page. Look at that. There's questions one to five. Please do these answers in your jotters and then make sure you photograph those pages and send them over to me on Show My Homework or Google Classroom so I know that you've done the work. Um, we'll try and do lessons like this. I think it should only take you about 20 to yeah, 15, 20 minutes to complete that work. Um, you know, just try your best. If you've got any questions, please make sure to reach out to me on Google Classroom and I'll try and answer the questions as soon as possible. Um, anyway, look forward to hearing from you all and uh, hope you get on well with all this work at home. Thanks, bye.